1240 Sports presents the high school basketball game of the week. Today, from Chrysler Arena in Newcastle, the number ninth ranked Mount Vernon Marauders take on the Newcastle Trojans. Today's game is being brought to you by Goodwin's Dodge Chrysler Plymouth, the oldest car dealership in the state. Lee's Famous Recipe Country Chicken. The great taste keeps you coming back for more. Dennis Office with two office locations in Indianapolis. And by Bowles Buick Old Pontiac GMC Trucks in Newcastle. And now here are Howard Kelman and Jim Casper. Channel 40 Sports presents the high school basketball game of the week. Today, the Mount Vernon Marauders play at the Newcastle Trojans. Hi, everybody. I'm Howard Kelman. I'll call the play-by-play. -play. Jim Casper will provide the color commentary. And Jim Casper in Mount Vernon, we've got an outstanding ball club. Oh, absolutely, Howard. Last year, the shoe was on the other foot. Newcastle entered this big game, ranked in the top ten in the state, invited to the Hall of Fame Classic. They won this early matchup and also then won the big regional game. But this year, it's Mount Vernon, ranked in the top ten of the state of Indiana. They've been invited to the Hall of Fame Classic this year. Jimmy Howe would like nothing better than to sweep the Trojans this season at Newcastle. We'll keep an eye on Brian Gilpin. Big number 50, he's going to Indiana University. Only a junior, he is the earliest commitment for Indiana University in the school's history. And Newcastle only has one returning starter, but he's quite a player. He's six foot seven, and his name is Barry Huckabee. He'll wear number 43, and this kid can play 18 rebounds in their opening win. We'll be back with the start of this game in just a moment. Back at Newcastle High School, Mount Vernon and Newcastle. Moments away, Jim Casper, both ball clubs want to know. Well, absolutely. Newcastle won by a score of 79 to 45 and Mount Vernon 80 to 45. Let's go to the starting lineups. We'll be introducing the Mount Vernon Marauders first. Starting at forward, number 40, Chad Klein. At another forward, number 20, Chris White. At center, number 50, Brian Gilpin. At guard, number 13, Roger Huffman. And the other guard, number 10, Mike Carter, and the rest of the Mount Vernon Marauders. Head coach, Jimmy Howell, assistant, Joe Smith. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Newcastle Trojans. Starting at forward, number 43, Barry Huckabee. And another forward, number 35, Brandon Riggs. The center, number 51, Scott Wickland. At one guard, number 33, Brian Catron. The other guard, Kyle Fox, number 25. And the rest of the Newcastle Trojans of Sam Alford. Mike Rutherford, assistant. Roger Miller. There you have the starting lineups here at Newcastle High School. The officials are J.D. Collins and Ron James, and we're ready to play basketball. Both these teams want to know. Jimmy Howell's team, Mount Vernon, 20 and four last year. Newcastle, 23 and six last season. There are the officials, Collins and James. And Brian Gilpin getting set to jump center for Mount Vernon. There are the starting lineups. Big Chad Klein at 6'8", going against 6'7", Barry Huckabee. Very good matchup there at forward. You would think that Gilpin would have the big advantage over Wickland, who uh, has no varsity experience before this season in the pivot. Gilpin at 6'11", Huckabee at 6'7", jump it up. And the tip controlled by Huffman, taken away beautifully. Taken away by Brandon Riggs. Yeah. 
And Newcastle has the basketball. Brian Catron to inbound. As Mount Vernon comes out pressing. There's Riggs. It's batted away. And the pass deflected. Saved by Klein. Kyle Fox, number 25. Huckabee. It had eyes. 2-0. Boy, we didn't see that last year. Barry, a great rebounder last year, averaged about 11 rebounds a game and 11 points, but he's looking to get very offensive early here. Nice turnaround, Jay. Huffman to Klein. Chad moves it across, guarded by Huckabee. This is Mike Carter. Carter number 10. Huffman out to Klein. And another steal. And a foul. Brian Katrin commits the personal. Oh, Brian hustling for the loose ball. That's that's okay. We've got to get after it. And uh, he was whistled there as he did make contact. And the ball will be out of bounds to Mount Vernon. Chad Klein to inbound. This is Chris White starting in place of the injured Kevin Browning, who has an ankle injury at a forward slot. Huffman, number 13, the playmaker. There's Gilpin, and what a play by Huckabee, but he may have committed the foul. Well, he made a statement. With that block shot right there, he made a statement, and Brian Gilpin will know each and every time he gets the ball in low like that, it'll be in the back of his mind. Where's Huckabee? Is he going to come at me? Great play that time uh, by Barry Huckabee. He did commit the foul, his first, and here is Brian Gilpin at the line, a 6-foot, 11-inch junior, and as Jim Casper told you, he already is committed to Indiana. No good. 2-0 in favor of Newcastle. 6.58 to go, first quarter. Gilpin misses them both. And the rebound pulled down by Brandon Riggs. Katrin to Riggs. Katrin with a jumper. Gilpin has the rebound. This is Carter. Chad Klein driving the baseline. Nice touch. He is a great shooter, Howard. For a big kid, 6'8", 220, you will not see a better pure shooter than Chad Klein. And a foul committed by Chris White. Non-shooting foul. We mentioned the uh, verbal commitment by Brian Gilpin. And of course, Jimmy Howell's got two Division I players on this squad, as Chad Klein has already announced he'll play basketball and attend Bradley University. And they beat the press. Here's Huckabee. The Kyle Fox is free. Gilpin with the rebound. Roger Huffman, number 13. Here's Mike Carter. Cross-court pass to Carter. The jumper by Carter. Out of bounds. The ball will go to Newcastle. Score is tied 2-2. 5.51 to go first quarter. High school basketball on Channel 40. Jimmy Howell very concerned entering this game. Three of his top seven players not in action tonight. Leg block is Riggs through the pass. Kevin Newcastle basketball. Kevin Browning and uh, Mark Marnett are both injured, Howard, as you well know. And Alex Shank is one of two Mount Vernon Marauders suspended for participating in last summer's Gus Macker tournament. And the jumper by Riggs is good. Brandon Riggs, Brandon Riggs first bucket. It's 4-2 to two, Newcastle. Trojans pressing in the backcourt. The press is beaten. Carter looping underneath for Gilpin, who puts it in. Good pass by Carter. Good hands by Brian, and I'm sure by the time he's a senior, he'll learn how to catch that and slam it through all in one motion. Good play that time, though. Katrin. Huckabee inside, and the shot blocked by Wickland. Shot was blocked. Chad Klein got his big bear claw on it after a tremendous pass by Barry Huckabee in the paint. He did that so effectively last year, he's picked up where he's left off. Here's Huffman. Carter, cross-court pass, and the jumper. No good by White. Nine shooting foul underneath. Boy, that's where that height comes in. You can see Chad Klein 
just getting up over the Newcastle player that time and able to force the uh, the issue there a little bit as number 51 picks up a foul for Newcastle. The Trojans getting in a little bit of trouble early. Wickland picks up his first of the night. And a free man is Chad Klein for the basket. His second basket, it's six to four Mount Vernon. Riggs with a lead for Huckabee who is able to save it and get it back out to catcher. The jumper by Fox. Carter is double team. Here's Huffman racing across. He may go all the way and throws it up. Huckabee with a rebound. Brandon Riggs. Good behind the back maneuver, but he missed the shot. Oh, look at Kyle Fox, Fox getting up. Blocked by Gilpin. Gilpin with a block off Wickman's shot. Boy, this is the way our game started out last Friday night, our first game of the week on TV 40. A lot of action in the first quarter, uh, a lot on the defensive end of this game. Two block shots already from Mount Vernon. Here's White. They start the offense over, and Fox bumps into Huffman. Well, Sam Alford wants a timeout right now because his young Trojans are a little rattled here in the early going against the state's number nine right there. That's number one on Kyle Fox. Timeout called, three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Mount Vernon leading Newcastle six to four. There you see Jimmy Howe diagramming a play in his 10th year here at Mount Vernon. Absolutely one of the best coaches in the state of Indiana. A career record of 147 wins and 60 losses. 13th year overall. He is just a tremendous young coach. Next week will be at Lawrence North as Burbuff plays at Lawrence North. And speaking of Burbuff, we look forward to seeing Mr. Henderson. Big Alan Henderson, 41 points at Carmel in his opener. Scott Shepard put in 38. We'll be seeing Scott down the road as well. I can't wait till that big matchup next week. Okay, Chad Klein will inbound. Klein inbounding to Chris White, who hands it to Roger Huffman. Here's Carter. The jump pass inside off Gilpin's hands. Recovered the shot, no good. And Klein goes up, and the ball is knocked out of bounds. They're letting them play, Howard. A lot of slapping going on in there. I like that. A lot of big kids in the ball game tonight. We mentioned two Division I uh, signees for Mount Vernon. Barry Huckabee going to Boston U for Newcastle. White's pass is knocked out of bounds by Brandon Riggs. Boy, what an impressive list of schools Barry Huckabee had. Dartman, Cornell, Harvard, Princeton. This kid does his work in the classroom as well as on the court. Here's Chad Klein. Good effort by Chad. Awfully good uh, coordination for a big kid. The left-hander showing a lot of body control in that big frame. He has six of the eight Mount Vernon points. Huckabee with a pass to Fox. Here's Huckabee. Short. Klein with the rebound. Huffman moves it across. Huffman with an opening. Now to White. And Gilpin hits the turnaround. I'm telling you, Howard, he reminds me an awful lot of Eric Montross at the same stage. A lot of people tuning in to watch him for the first time tonight. And his steal, and here's Carter. 10 to 4, Mount Vernon. Huffman double teamed, and Kyle Fox can't save it. Quickness is the forte of Kyle Fox. As you can see him also hustling out of bounds trying to save the ball. We saw him a little bit last year on some of our uh, Newcastle telecast. There's Sam Alford, the head coach at Newcastle. We saw him briefly in his 16th year. And Huffman called for a double dribble. Huffman wanted a call that time on Kyle Fox, but the referee's being consistent, letting the play uh, a little bit physical, and I like that. I think the kids do, too, as long as they play it uh, consistently on both ends, uh, no problems. Lincoln Chapel has checked into the ball game for Mount Vernon. And the press is beaten. Huckabee's jumper is short. Gilpin with a rebound. Here's Huffman, and a good defensive play by Katrin. And the rebound by Huckabee, and a foul call. <laughs> Klein lost his balance and came right over Barry's back that time. That's 220 pounds of basketball player falling right on Barry, and 
Good call by the officials. First personal on Chad Klein. 2.20 to go first period. 10 to four, Mount Vernon. Katrin with the inbounds pass. And a poor pass there, intercepted by Chapel. Cross court pass to Klein. And the Southpaw has eight points. He has eight, Gilpin has four for Mount Vernon. And that was a three pointer. He can drill it. He has nine points. Out of bounds, it'll be Newcastle's ball. A little bit of the inexperience starting to show through for Newcastle as four starters departed from Sam Alford's team of one year ago, a team that went all the way to the final eight and darn near made it to the final four, but Southport upset them. Timeout called by Newcastle. One minute and 51 seconds remaining in this first quarter. The score, Mount Vernon 13 and Newcastle four for Mount Vernon. Chad Klein has nine points. Brian Gilpin has four points. For Newcastle, Barry Huckabee and Brandon Riggs each have a basket. TV 40 imposes the Waltons on you each weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Remember when good was good and bad was bad and people knew the difference? Well, John Boy, Livia, Grandpa, and the entire Walton clan will remind you of their constant moralizing on the Waltons weekday afternoons at 5 o'clock on TV 40. There you see it, 13 to 4, Mount Vernon. 151 to go in this first quarter. That's Darren Collar, the cameraman, wearing that red shirt. Darren wanted to get on the court tonight. He was able to do that. But Huckabee's jumper, no good. He has not been red shirted, though. And the rebound put up, no good, but a foul. Well, Barry Huckabee kept that ball al alive, and we mentioned. Uh, in the opening, 18 rebounds in their opening game victory against Knightstown. 12 of those rebounds coming on the offensive end. That's impressive. Brian Gilpin commits his first personal. Here is Barry Huckabee, who already has committed to Boston University. Excellent inside and outside man. 84% free throw shooter. Oh, I knew as soon as I said that he might miss one, and he did. Put the hex on him, and that's uh, that happens everywhere, no matter what sport. As soon as you make a comment like that, he's going to miss one. Member of the National Honor Society, second free throw is good. It's 13 to 5 in favor of the Marauders. Here's Carter moving it across, behind the back maneuver. Chad Klein working outside. There's Chapel. Carter goes to the backboard, over and back. And Newcastle gets it back. It's a little bit of the Marauder end experience uh, showing through. They lost two starters from a year ago. Mike Archer, who's playing basketball at Clarion State in Pennsylvania. And John DeKine, who's attending Ball State but not playing basketball. This is Kyle Fox, guarded by Huffman. Katrin misses the jumper, and Gilpin's got the rebound. Huffman is pressed by Fox. Now they're double teaming Huffman. Lincoln Chapel. Chapel double team. It'll be Newcastle ball. Well, Sam Alford's defense has really tightened up and resulted in two consecutive turnovers by Mount Vernon. Uh, good point. Sam Alford calls the timeout. And uh, Newcastle promptly turns up the heat on defense, and it's paying dividends. Chris White checks in, replacing Lincoln Chapel. Here's Jason Holmes, who's checked in inbounding to Brian Agee. Back to Holmes for a three that's no good. Gilpin with the rebound. Newcastle's got to start hitting the outside open jump shot. There's Klein, and he's got it again. He, he can just flat out bury it. What a great shooter. He has 11 of the 15 Mount Vernon points. 40 seconds to go first period. Kyle Fox with the basketball. Jason Holmes. Here's Fox. Doesn't shoot. Holmes is free for three, but doesn't shoot. They give it to Huckabee. AG, they swing the ball around inside. Fox and the jumper by AG no good. 
And Gilpin with the rebound. Boy, the height really showed there as Klein altered that shot by sticking his hand up in the air, and Gilpin grabbed the rebound. Huckabee's being sandwiched by those two. Klein with a beautiful move on the baseline, beating Huckabee. 13 points for Chad Klein. It's 17 to 5, Mount Vernon, and that's the end of the first quarter. So the score after one, Mount Vernon 17 and Newcastle 5, and we'll be back in a moment. Howard Kelman and Jim Kasperg as Kyle Fox hits a jumper. That's what the Trojans needed right there. Fox's first jumper, 17 to 7, Mount Vernon, opening moment of period two, and a steal by Jason Holmes. Two quick buckets by the Trojans. Jason Holmes, two They're trying to beat the press. Huffman dribbling right through it. Roger Huffman, number 13, given room by Fox as Klein sets the pick. They reverse the ball to Boyle. There's Chad Klein. And the jumper, good by Chris White. His first field goal, 19 to nine in favor of the ninth ranked Marauders. Here's Huckabee with a jump. He has it. Nice looking for him that time. Barry Huckabee is a very, very effective player. He looks a little stronger this year than he did a year ago. I believe he's picked up about 10 pounds and a very hard worker. This kid's just a heck of a player. He has five points and a nice pass inside, but the shot is missed. Huckabee has the rebound. This is Jason Holmes. Kyle Fox is free. No good. Chris White with the rebound. Roger Huffman pressed by Fox. And the jumper. No good by Boyle. Rebound no good. And Klein wins the race for the loose ball. Roger Huffman at center court. This is Jeff Boyle. Gilpin is outside. Klein is deep, and he's fouled up. No, no call. He just lost the ball. Barry Huckabee slapped it right out of his hands. Good defensive play again by the Trojans. Here's Jason Holmes for three, and he has it. Jason Holmes with five points has given this Newcastle team a spark off the bench. Jimmy Howell wants a timeout. 5.33 to go first half. The score. Mount Vernon 19, Newcastle 14. It was 17 to five at the quarter and a rush by the Trojans here in the early moments of period two. Well, they blitzed out on a ninth to two run and basically defense has ignited the offense for Newcastle. Jimmy Howe's gonna make some adjustments there as he's really seen some sloppy play offensively. He wants to correct that, uh, get Brian Gilpin a little more involved, but boy, Chad Klein has really had a whale of a game early for Mount Vernon. In the junior varsity game, Mount Vernon defeated Newcastle 57 to 39. Trojans have won 18 straight here at Newcastle High School. So a streak on the line. When you think of Newcastle High School basketball, two names come to mind immediately, Steve Alford and Kent Benson. Absolutely. And of course, Sam Alford, Steve's dad here on the bench tonight for the Newcastle Trojans, his 15th year here. A career record of 378 wins and 198 defeats. Roger Huffman. Met at the midcourt line by Kyle Fox. Klein working outside against Huckabee. Here's White. This is Gilpin to Klein. Huckabee bats it away. Tough defense by Newcastle. Huffman against Fox. Klein and Huckabee. What a move by Chad Klein. I'll tell you, there's some colleges that missed on this kid in a big way. He can play higher than Bradley. I'll tell you what, you've got to tip your hat to the Braves. They picked up a plum in Mr. Chad Klein. Not the quickest kid you'll see, but boy, does he have great body control. Huckabee misses a jumper. 
Fox saves it, but White has the ball. This is Roger Huffman, and he's fouled in the end. Scott Wickland commits the person. Hell, Scott put an exclamation point on it, and uh, you don't want to give up the easy two points. Good foul by Scott. 21 to 14 in favor of Mount Vernon. Roger Huffman at the free throw line, a five foot eight and senior. Fouled in the act, he'll shoot two. I'm real impressed with Mount Vernon playing basically, as we mentioned, without three of their top seven players. Uh, probably the most notable of whom would be Kevin Browning, injured in the first game against Shenandoah in the first quarter. He had eight points in, in that game. So we'll take a look, and Wickland goes up and just does what you have to do. You cannot let a player score on the uncontested layup. He hammered it. He didn't get him with a body, though, for the foul, as Huffman makes both free throws. And it's 23-19, a nine-point lead for Mount Vernon. Brandon Riggs, Kyle Fox, no good. Whistle underneath. Huckabee, I believe. You are correct. And it's two on Barry Huckabee. 421 to go first half. Newcastle is over the limit, so Roger Huffman will go to the free throw line. A moment ago, he just made two free throws. Well, Newcastle lost so many good players from last year's team. A team that went all the way to the final eight, as I mentioned. And Sam Alford lost four of those kids to graduation. Daryl Guppy, Tim Haynes, Chris Walls, and Shane Riggs. And I think what happens in that situation, Howard, is you've got four new kids that come in, and they just don't have the self-confidence. I don't believe these kids realize how good they can be, but I like what I see in Fox and Catron in the backcourt. And, of course, Huckabee's a proven uh, performer up front. It is Roger Huffman, one and one. He makes the first one. He went to the line, then Chad Klein went to the line, and Huffman ultimately shoots the free throw. He makes the first one, so he'll get the bonus. It is a 10-point lead for Mount Vernon. Second one, no good. Huckabee with the rebound. This is Jason Holmes. Kyle Fox. And the jumper good by Brandon Riggs. Good ball movement that time. Riggs, the younger brother of Shane Riggs, who graduated last year. And a beautiful steal by Holmes. Riggs on the move. A whistle. No basket. Player control foul on Riggs. And a good defensive play by Chad Klein that time. Holding his ground as Riggs. He's a bulldozer. He likes to go right at you. He looks... He plays this game a little bit like you'd expect an outside linebacker to play it. He's big, he's strong, he's very physical, but he got called for the charge that time. Klein looking inbound and barely gets it in. Huffman pressed. This is Klein. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it, Howard. Oh, Fox got called for the foul. The Newcastle fans don't like it. Number two on Kyle Fox. So Chad Klein will go to the line. There's Sam Alford, who's very upset. He's barking on the bench there, as he really, really thought that the defense of his Newcastle Trojans should have been rewarded that time with a 10-second call, and he was mighty close. Klein with a one-and-one -one makes the free throw. He now has 16 of the 25 Mount Vernon points. Well, just like last week when we saw Travis Kuhn for Southwestern, I really thought some college scouts fell asleep on him. Maybe they won't uh, during the regular season that they'll capture him, but Chad Klein, I feel the same way about it. He's just really, really looked impressive here tonight. Newcastle basketball. Jason Holmes and Kyle Fox work in the backcourt. This is Kyle Fox. Fox. Here's Huckabee. Fox is free. He's got it. Second field goal for Fox. He has four. He has really nice form on his jump shot. I think Fox is going to be a good ball player this year for Newcastle. And a steal. Riggs with a basketball to Fox. Seven-point lead for Mount Vernon as Riggs misses. Huckabee is deep. He has Huckabee's third field goal. He has a free throw for seven. 
55-20 in favor of Mount Vernon. Huckabee never saw an offensive rebound that he didn't feel had his name on it. Huffman against Fox. There's Chris White. Klein working outside on Huckabee. Huffman inside. And who's going to get that one? Brandon Riggs gets it to Fox. And we have a foul. Might be on Fox. We'll see. No, it's on Mount Vernon. <laughs> They're letting him play, Howard. We've seen a lot of action here tonight. Not too many whistles. And as I've said many, many times before, I like that. Give the kids a little opportunity to, to enjoy themselves out there without letting it get out of hand. And I really think the uh, refs are doing a great job tonight. Mike Carter committed the personal. There's a real key stat there. Mount Vernon with nine untimely turnovers here. We still got 2.34 to go in the first half. Barry Hook with a basket. Boy, he just got quick guilt in that time. Went right by him and scored on the layup. Newcastle has cut it to three. Roger Huffman. Huffman is deep in a beautiful left-handed move. Very pretty. Largest lead was 12. It's 17 to 5. It was down to 3. Now it's 5. Ryan Jordan. And a three-pointer is missed by Jason Holmes. Chad Klein with the board. Jason Holmes, uh, only a sophomore. He was 3 for 3 in the uh, first game of Newcastle's in, of the season last Wednesday night. So he can put it up from three-point land. Huffman. Klein left of the lane. Nice touch. Boy, he plays facing the basket, and right there he showed you he can collect it with his back to the basket. Huffman misses the shot, has the rebound, and scores. Two quick buckets by the Marauders. Huffman with a little flurry. That's two baskets in a little over a minute for the little guy. The jumper by Catron is no good, and Gilpin's got the rebound. It's a nine-point lead for the Marauders. A minute 15 to go first half. Well, I sense a little momentum shift here right at the end of the first uh, half as we near the end of the second quarter. Klein is deep. He's got it. No player control foul. No basket. His second personal. Now well, you've got to call it at both ends. And as we saw in the first quarter, Klein took a charge from Riggs in just the same manner as that time uh, the official called it on Chad. Huckabee will get a rest. A minute four to go, first half, 31-22 Mount Vernon. Jason Holmes to inbound. This is Brian Catron. Riggs to Holmes. Brian Catron. And the jumper by Riggs is good. Brandon Riggs with his third field goal. He has six points. It is a seven-point lead for Mount Vernon with 30 seconds to go in the first half. Carter. And the jumper, long. Let's see if the Trojans play for the last shot. Jason Holmes. You called it, Howard. It looks like they're going to do just that. Sam Alford looking for the last shot of the uh, first half. Try to cut this margin down to five or less. 12 seconds. Riggs. Eight seconds. Now's when they ought to make the move. Holmes misses the shot. Gilpin with the rebound. And that'll do it. That's the end of the first half with a score. Mount Vernon 31, Newcastle 24. We'll be back in just a moment. Howard Kelman and Jim Kasperg. We are back at Newcastle High School. We're at halftime. It's the Mount Vernon Marauders 31, the Newcastle Trojans 24. What a beautiful arena this is. Now, as you've seen, Howard, the world's largest high school field house almost filled up here tonight. Eight of the nine largest high school field houses in the world right here in the state of Indiana. And now to our halftime feature with Ron Newland, the executive director of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. 
the 1990 Hall of Fame Classic is scheduled for Saturday, December 29th. For reserved seating, call 317-529-1891. This year, catch the action of preseason top-ranked Gary Roosevelt, Martinsville, Southport, and Mount Vernon as they battle it out for the championship. Game times are at 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. with the consolation game beginning at 6 and the finals at 8. Session tickets are only $7. See Indiana basketball at its best. Call 317-529-1891. We're at halftime, and Mount Vernon leads Newcastle 31 to 24. We've got local personality Dennis Kinzer with us. He is the general manager of Goodwin Brothers, one of our sponsors, and also personality at WCTW. And Dennis is going to give us some of the halftime stats. That's why right. some people do just about anything, get on TV. <laughs> well, that's what we understand you did. You made it. Yeah, I've been helping uh, WCTW out the last few years, uh, helping call the games. And one reason, you always get a good seat. Anyway, for the halftime uh, statistics... That's a good reason. <laughs> that's right. The halftime statistics, as we said, the Marauders from Mount Vernon are ahead of the Trojans, 31-24. The Marauders are shooting the ball extremely well, 12 out of 23 on the field goals, 1 out of 2 from the three-point shots. Newcastle, after a slow start, is 10 out of 29, and 1 of 3 from the three-point range. Free throws, 50% for the Marauders, 4 of 8. Also for the Newcastles, only 1 of 2. Turnovers, Mount Vernon has nine turnovers to fire for Newcastle in the rebounding. This is a big edge. Mount Vernon has 20 rebounds, only nine for Newcastle. Okay, Dennis, thank you very kindly. We'll look forward to seeing you a little later during the season. We'll be back here. Okay, I'll be here. We thank you very Thanks kindly for, for coming by. Individually, Chad Klein has 18 points for Mount Vernon to lead all scorers. Roger Huffman, his teammate, has seven. Brian Gilpin, four. Chris White, two. For Newcastle, Barry Huckabee has nine. Brandon Riggs, six. Kyle Fox, four. Jason Holmes has five. Jim Kasperk settling in. As we get ready for period three, Mount Vernon leading by seven. Howard, with uh, the job that Newcastle did in getting back in the ball game, and I really feel uh, that this young team with inexperience uh, in the starting lineup, just one player back from last year, uh, just really gained a lot of confidence in that second quarter. They'll be a factor in the North Central Conference race this year. A race which I've said since June is going to belong to the Richmond Red Devils. They're my pick to win the NCC with Billy Wright, the young uh, quarterback running the point guard show for the Red Devils. Okay, period number three, and Chad Klein will inbound for Mount Vernon. This is Roger Huffman. He and Kyle Fox, both at five feet eight, battling one another tonight. Mike Carter. Carter continues that dribble. Here's Chris White to Huffman. White. Tied up. Jump it up. Huckabee ties it up, and in the alternate possessions, it's Newcastle ball. Well, a big part of the Trojan comeback, as we mentioned, uh, in that second quarter was due to defense, and they don't let up a bit here uh, in the third quarter. A little pressure in the backcourt. This is Kyle Fox. Brian Catron, the other guard. Riggs. And Huckabee, no good. Gilpin with the board. He just reached over everybody and yanked that one down. He's had a big night in the rebounding department. This is Chad Klein. Looping pass for Gilpin, and he scored. Great hands that time, and I made a comment in the first half, Howard, that I really think this kid reminds me a lot of uh, Eric Montross at the same stage. Keep in mind, Eric Montross has Fox Gilpin misses. another rebound. Huckabee takes it away and puts it in. Great veteran play by Huckabee. The Mr. O, the offensive rebounder, Barry Huckabee. Keep in mind, Howard, that Gilpin is a full year behind Montross. Eric, of course, uh, repeated the eighth grade in order to gain that extra year of high school eligibility. And on the turnover, Newcastle gets it back. Lincoln Chapel, number 44. Lincoln Chapel checks in the ball game for Mount Vernon. I really think the Marauders miss Kevin Browning a lot. His experience and ball handling abil ability would really help them here get the ball up the court. Huckabee with another jumper. His sixth field goal, he has 13 points. Well, he's an Indiana All-Star candidate, no question about it. 33-28 Mount Vernon. Here's Chapel. 
No good. Gilpin fights and Gilpin is fouled. Good call that time as Brian really got handcuffed, went to the floor, and he's battling in there tonight. He's going to fill out so much. The doctors say he's probably got another inch or two left height-wise, and his body is going to fill out uh, a lot broader. He'll probably play in college at about 230 pounds uh, at least, and that'll be 15 pounds more than he is right now. Scott Wilkin committed his third personal foul. Gilpin makes the first one. He now has seven points. He is one of three from the line. Second one also good. 6.20 to go in period three. 35-28 Mount Vernon. Katrin to Fox. Huckabee. Long. They jump it up, and on the alternate procession, Mount Vernon will get it. And here is Kevin Browning checking in the game for the first time. He hurt his ankle the other night. Well, Jimmy Hale told me he might see action. He wasn't sure. Uh, Kevin woke up this morning, and, and the ankle felt a little better. And we'll see. It was just injured uh, uh, two nights ago in the Marauders opening contest. He's a six-foot-one-inch junior. Gilpin outside. There's Browning. Roger Huffman to Chad Klein. Driving one-hander by Klein, who has played a superb game. He has improved so much over last year, Howard. I can't tell you how impressed I am. He can shoot stationary, but more impressive, he can shoot off the run. 20 points for Chad Klein. And the jumper is no good by Riggs. Out of bounds, it'll be Mount Vernon ball. Boy, oh boy, what a ball game Chad Klein is having. He has just really moved himself up markedly in my rankings. I had him in the, among the top 40 seniors in the state. I think he's in the top 30 easy. Here's Roger Huffman. Carter. And the jumper by Browning is good. He adds a dimension to Mount Vernon. As I said, he was injured in the first quarter of their opening game victory over Shenandoah and had eight points by the time he went out. Mount Vernon by 11. Riggs, no good. All Mount Vernon is Gilpin has the rebound. Browning. And Riggs bats it out of bounds. Boy, he's aggressive. He just reached right in there and knocked it away. And uh, that may have... Uh, Help foil a little of the momentum that Mount Vernon has had ever since Browning came into the ball, but there our ball game. There's a steal. Wickland with a steal. Here's Katrin. Briggs. Not looking to the hoop. Wickland shot is blocked by Gilpin. Huckabee tips it to Riggs, who hits a jumper. Good play by Huckabee. That is just, you know, it is said that this is a spontaneous game. It's not a thinking man's game. It's very reactionary. And Huckabee proved at that time. What a great decision. A split-second decision to tap that ball to the open man. Fox pressing Huffman. Ooh. Well, they're letting him play all right. <laughs> Nobody can believe that one. <laughs> Let's we'll see what the call is. Huckabee got hammered there. He's on the ground. He's all right, though, getting up. Gilpin commits the personal. That's his second. Boy, oh, boy, this is as physical as I've seen it in a while. Great game. Great game. They're really letting them play, to say the least, Howard. Huffman may want to play some football next fall. <laughs> they may need pads before this game's over. Katrin. And a good pass inside, but it goes out of bounds. As Riggs was on the drive and took the pass from Wickland. I like what I see from Newcastle. All the kids have great shooting form. Katrin misses. They pass well. They don't, they aren't blessed with a great deal of experience. That's about the only minus. I think they'll get that during the year. Lost four starters from last year's team. Fox bumps into Browning. Boy, did you see how Browning threaded the needle? That looked like uh, Larry Bird lofting it into Robert Parrish for the Boston Celtics. He is just a very heady player, and they aren't the same team without him on the floor. Kyle Fox commits his third personal. 
Mount Vernon ball, 3.43 to go, third quarter. 39-30, Mount Vernon. Here's Browning. He draws the foul. Oh. No, player control foul. Player control foul on Kevin Browning. His first. Jimmy Hale pacing the sidelines there as the foul is called on Browning. You've got to be impressed with, uh, you know, despite the fact that Kevin was called for the foul, you've got to be impressed with him being able to make that play. It was a beautiful move. It really was. Jason Holmes checks in, replacing Kyle Fox for Newcastle. Uh, we mentioned Jimmy Hale, Sam Alford, of course, the veteran coach that he is, a great coach in Indiana high school basketball. He took a team to the Final Four. I believe that was back in 1984 where he lost to eventual state champ Warsaw. Katrin out to Holmes. Wickland rejected mm. by Gilpin. Gilpin says, go tell off, Wickland. Get that out of here. There's Browning and Gilpin. Brady scores. See what Browning adds to this team. It's remarkable. They're up 11, and really, ever since he's entered the contest, this ball game has switched around. Riggs, nice move by Brandon Riggs. His fifth field goal of the night, he has 10 points. You notice what a, a better player Browning makes Gilpin as he has really teamed up with the big guy, and Brian has had a couple nice rejections here and excellent rebounding throughout the game. Here's Mike Carter. There's Kevin Browning, he's free. Chad Klein with a follow-up. Wow, Barry Huckabee doesn't like that. He, he thinks every rebound is his, and uh, that time Klein did what Huckabee does so effectively, put in the offensive rebound. Browning tips it out of bounds. 22 points for Chad Klein. 2.24 to go, third quarter, 43-32 in favor of the Marauders. Jimmy Hell thinks this could be his best team ever, and keep in mind, in 1987, they advanced to the final eight and almost made it to the final four but they were defeated by Richmond. Huckabee. Good turnaround move. So quick. Boy, he's got a lot of pluses in his game. He has 15 points. He plays well inside and outside. Absolutely. Here's Roger Huffman. Mike Carter to Browning. Gilpin is deep. And Riggs may have stepped out of bounds. Now keep in mind, on that play by Gilpin, that, that's a very athletic play for a kid six foot 11. To even maintain his balance. And Howard, uh, Eric Montross at the same stage was only a sophomore. I really think Gilpin's going to be a great one. All right, Browning. And a steal by Katrin for the bucket. <laughs> Newcastle within seven, 43-36. Again, good defensive pressure for Newcastle. Pays dividends on the offensive end. Here's Kevin Browning. What great hands. Gilpin. What great hands. Brian Gilpin. Brian Gilpin with five field goals, two free throws for 12. Eight of them in this third quarter. Holmes. Jason Holmes, number 11. Here's Riggs, and a nice pass to Huckabee. Good play. Again, the quickness, Huckabee, you just can't substitute anything for quickness. It's just, just such a, a great asset to have, and he thinks quick, and he reacts quick physically. 50 seconds to go, third quarter. Browning, here's Carter to Browning. Oh, that Wicklin hurt. commits his fourth that personal. Hurt. That's number four on Scott Wicklin. It may have hurt Wickland more. How would you like to have 6'8", 220 pounds coming at you like that? Well, I'll tell you, Browning just looks past every time he touches the ball. He looks inside to the tall timber first, and he's, he really is such a threat. Uh, his all-around game is a tremendous asset. Here we can see Wickland and big number. Well, that's Chad Klein for Mount Vernon hitting the deck there, number 40. Here's Chad Klein. And A.G. grabs the rebound. He just checked in for Wickman. Two big guys in Klein and Gilpin. Mount Vernon using its height effectively. Hey, hey. Jason Holmes. 
and Brian Catron in the backcourt. And they're going to play for the last shot of the period with 20 seconds remaining and a seven-point lead for Mount Vernon as you see Sam Alford. As good as Mount Vernon's looked, if Newcastle connects here, they've played the Marauders even up in the third quarter. Eight seconds remain. Katrin knocked out of bounds with four seconds. You ready? Five. Brandon Riggs. No, it's going to be Brian Agee who inbounds, and he's going to get it, have to get it over the outstretched hands of Gilpin. Huckabee, two seconds. Scored a three-pointer. And that's the end of the third quarter with a score. Mount Vernon, 45. Newcastle, 41. Back with a fourth and final period in just a moment. Fourth and final period at Newcastle High School. Trojans down by four. They trailed by 12, 17 to five at the end of the first quarter. Jason Holmes. Katrin, no good. Three point attempt. And Mount Vernon has the ball as Kevin Browning comes up with it and hands it to Roger Huffman. Well, that three point bucket by Huckabee at the end of the third quarter was the biggest play so far tonight. We'll see if it allows Newcastle to maintain uh, momentum here going into this critical fourth quarter. Browning inside the lane. No good. Huckabee. And now it's Katrin. Blocked by Gilpin, taken off by Browning. Go towel off, Gilpin says. We don't want any of that in here tonight. It's about five times that he's been able to reject the Newcastle Trojans when they come inside. He's posting right side of the lane against Huckabee. Meanwhile, Huffman has the ball out to Klein, and they get it to Gilpin down low. No good. Nobody goes up for the rebound immediately. And the foul against Mount Vernon against Kevin Browning, his second. Our statistician tonight, Don Spall, director Dave Streit, executive producer Dennis Casey. It's Jim Casper, Don Spall, Dennis Casey, and I are seated courtside. Dave Streit up in the truck. 6.50 to go. You now you have the inside story of what goes on here. <laughs> Absolutely. And inside Newcastle Chrysler Fieldhouse is beginning to heat up. And a whistle and a foul. It's on Gilpin, who is anticipating. Called for pushing off, and that's his third personal. Well, Brian disagreed with the call, and Jimmy Howell told him, calm down. Calm down. It's been called, and that's the way it's going to stand. Brian Martin also is keeping statistics tonight. Couldn't do it without him. Kyle Fox to Katrin. Newcastle down by four. Six and a half to go in the game. Huckabee didn't hang on. Line with a basketball. And Jason Holmes threw a block into Roger Huffman. Nice. And didn't get away with it either. He's called for the foul. That's right. He's got those shoulder pads on. He said, hey, everybody else is playing a little pigskin. Why can't I? His first personal. 6.24 to go in the game. It's a four-point lead. Neither team has scored in this fourth period. Mount Vernon by four, 45-41. Chad Klein with the inbounds pass. Roger Huffman against Jason Holmes. There's Browning battling, battling. And a baseline move and a shot, no good. But Huffman, who is a tough little kid, he's a battler. He draws the foul. Well, it doesn't get any easier for the Newcastle Trojans next week. They travel to Richmond, Indiana to face the, my pick for the NCC champions for 1990-91, the Richmond Red Devils at the Tiernan Center, which, Howard, this may be the biggest high school field house in the state, in the, in the world here at Newcastle, but I really believe the most impressive is Richmond's Tiernan Center. What a marvelous facility that is. Huckabee commits his third personal. Huffman makes the free throw. He'll get one more. Here's a look again here as we see out front. Good defensive uh, pressure put in there by Newcastle. Ball goes inside to Huffman, and he's hammered as he goes to the bucket. He also makes the second one. He is five of six from the free throw line tonight. Six-point Marauder lead. Huckabee too deep for the shot. 
This is Catron. Jason Holmes as they swing the ball to the left. Huckabee. No shot, no foul. Two men are down. Well, Huckabee's in some pain. Now he's on his feet. He and Klein both were down. And a good defensive play by Brian Catron, who broke it up. The pass intended for Gilpin. Great idea by Browning, but he was spoiled that time. Absolutely. Another great play on defense. And speaking of defense, there's a steal for the Marauders. Huffman is fouled in the act of shooting. He'll go to the line for two. Well, Riggs, the middle linebacker, <laughs> making the good play that time. You've got to do that. You cannot permit two uh, freebies, two easy points like that for free. Send them into the line. Make him earn it. Brandon Riggs commits his second personal. Roger Huffman at the line. He'll shoot two. He has two field goals, five free throws for nine. First free throw is good. And he has scored the only three points in this period. Here's the breakaway here, and you can see Riggs going right at him, knocking the ball loose, and contact made with the body that time. He also makes the second one in Huffman's free throw shooting, playing a key role in this Mount Vernon lead. Eight-point lead now, and that's uh, fairly sizable in a game like this. Beautiful move by Kyle Fox. First time we've seen Kyle go to the bucket. He's quick enough to do that. He challenged the big guy that time. He has three field goals for six. Carter recovers. Six-point lead for Mount Vernon. 5.05 to go. Chad Klein. Beautiful move. Right down the boulevard. Chad Klein with that floater. We've seen it all night. He can hit that left-handed floater. 51-43 Mount Vernon. Huckabee behind the back. Baseline. What an individual effort that was. Highlight reel. <laughs> Break out that highlight reel. Barry Huckabee making his entry for our highlight reel. And we're going to have... Ball out of bounds awarded to Mount Vernon. What a great play by Barry Huckabee. A little city shake and bake behind the back. Then off glass. Great play by Barry Huckabee. Timeout, Mount Vernon. 4.45 left to go in the game. Mount Vernon, 51, Newcastle. 45, we'll be back in a moment. Carter goes up and a whistle and a foul. As Mount Vernon got the ball inbounds and rushed the ball up court. Yeah, it looked like it might be a breakaway bucket, but it resulted in some contact under the basket. And the Mount Vernon Marauders will go to the line. Uh, we mentioned Newcastle's next game. The Marauders on Friday, November 30th, will host Yorktown. And Ryan Heaston, outstanding junior guard uh, for Yorktown High School. So Mount Vernon and Newcastle both in action next Friday night. November the 30th, and I hope that their faith will get out and see these teams play. Brian Catron committed the foul. Carter missed the one and one, but the Marauders still have the basketball. And they have a six-point lead. Here's Browning. Gilpin. Nice turnaround move. It's going to be a good one, Howard. That is just a, a great play, catching the ball, faking one way, turning the other, and bearing that little short J. 14 for Gilpin. Huckabee, no good. Mount Vernon ball. Boy, Barry, Barry nearly slipped in there and grabbed yet another offensive rebound. He's been everywhere tonight, particularly underneath the offensive rim as he really uh, makes a living down there collecting those offensive rebounds. 4.14 to go in the game. The Marauders lead by eight. Carter with a basketball. Huffman free, and he gets it to Huffman. And a foul on Brian Catron. Number three on Katrin. Hey, you can't blame Newcastle. It's, they have really had a lot of success tonight with their defensive pressure. And until Mount Vernon can figure out a way uh, uh, to solve it and, and uh, get away from the turnovers, Sam Alford's going to keep his kids real active defensively. That time they were called for a foul, but Huffman's going to have to hit the uh, front one uh, to get a chance at two points. 4.02 to go in the game. Huffman at the line. Five foot eight inch senior. And he misses. And the rebound grabbed by Riggs. Boy, Kyle Fox. Fox dribbling through a maze and foul on the play. Well, Kyle got a break that time. He was a little out of control. 
And uh, luckily for Newcastle, there was a foul call just before he met up with big Brian Gilpin, who was ready to send one send one out into the stands again, as he's done five times before. And that's four personals, Jim Kasberg, on Brian Gilpin. That's critical. Kyle Fox at the line. One and one. Now well, here's the free throw aspect of the ball game, so critical in every ball game, and uh, every good team that's successful connects on their free throws. And Kyle Fox did so there on the first one, as you can see him going into the lane, and a little out of control there, but the foul is called, and he connects on both free throws. Yes, he does. That cuts the lead to six. 3.50 to go in the game. The Marauders by six. Browning looking for Gilpin down low. Can't get it oh. to him. Instead, the pass to Huffman. Huckabee has the rebound. Great pass by Browning. Excellent call by the official. Newcastle, if they can hit their free throws, is right back in this ball game. Gilpin's got four fouls on him. I'll tell you, this game is wide open right now. It could go either way. Roger Huffman commits the person. Huckabee at the line. 3.41 to go. Mount Vernon by six. And Jim Kasberg, it could very well come down to free throw shooting. Absolutely, as we've seen both teams go to the line now. The last three times down the court has been resulted in, in free throws. Newcastle connecting on there too. Mount Vernon failed to hit the front end of their last free throw situation. We'll see what Huckabee does here for the Trojans. One and one. He's got it. He has nine field goals, a three-point field goal, two free throws for 23. Well, there we'll take a look there as Mount Vernon going to the hole and this shot by Huffman, and then he fouls Huckabee, uh, scrambling for the loose ball. Huckabee also makes the second one to cut it to four. Newcastle pressing, Browning looking to inbounds, and he gets it to Chad Klein, whom we haven't seen that much of in this second half. No, absolutely not, as Newcastle is adjusted defensively very well. There could be a tripping foul on number 11. I think that's Jason Holmes, the sophomore. It is. And that's number two on Holmes. Holmes was Newcastle's second leading scorer in their opening game victory, their opening season victory over Knightstown, 79 to 45. He had 15 points in that ball game. And of course, the leading scorer was Barry Huckabee. He had 22 points and 18 rebounds against Knightstown. All right, Kevin Browning at the line, one and one, six foot one inch junior, first appearance at the line tonight, playing with an injured ankle. It's good, and a big one of it. <laughs> he got a, a prayer, he got a, his prayers answered on the bounce there as uh, Kevin looked over to the sidelines as that one bounced in and as if to say, boy, am I lucky that one found the net. And he's also got the second one and the Marauders lead by six. This is Kyle Fox moving it across. Holmes, Katrin for three, no good. It'll be Newcastle ball. There's Jimmy Howell in his 10th year. Unflappable. A lot of coach would be, uh, coaches would be screaming and yelling about uh, that call, but Jimmy simply signals the defense what alignment he wants. Riggs will inbound. Here's Riggs' jumper. Boy, oh boy, Newcastle. These kids can shoot the ball. I know they haven't had a lot of success on the perimeter shooting tonight, but I think this team, as the year goes on, is going to be known as a very good outside shooting team. Here's Huffman. Three minutes to go, Mount Vernon by four. Carter. Gilpin up high. Well, if I'm Mount Vernon, I want the ball in Browning's hands. He because good things seem to result when Kevin Browning has the ball. There is the entry pass to Gilpin. There's Browning and there's Carter. Chad Klein is deep. No good. Who's going to get it? Newcastle. Boy, we came very close to seeing Brian Gilpin pick up personal foul number five, but he avoided it, and Newcastle will have the ball with a chance to draw with him, too. Two and a half to go in the game. 55-51 Mount Vernon. Huckabee against the shorter Huffman, but he doesn't make the move. Now he's got the ball again to the baseline. Riggs wasn't looking for the pass. 
Oh, bad turn of events that time for Newcastle. Sam Alford not happy at all as he comes tearing out onto the court and uh, yells some words of warning to his Trojans on the floor that time as the turnover, Barry Huckabee, uh, with a, a ill-advised pass that time, one of the few times we've seen Barry do anything wrong, and it resulted in a foul by, I believe, Riggs, and we'll see if Huffman can connect here. He is at the line. Has seven free throws. He's short. Newcastle ball down by four. Kyle Fox. Jason Holmes, he hits! He can pop and Howard is three for three from three-point lane in the first game for Newcastle. This young sophomore could be the answer. Huffman. Here's Carter as they slow it down. And a steal by Brian Catron. This could tie it up. Rejection by Klein. Great block by Chad Klein. And a clean block. Huckabee. Tip up, no good. And a whistle on foul. He's gone. That's on Gilpin. That's fine, Howard. <laughs> Brian Gilpin is fouled out. He scored 14 points. Well, if we don't see overtime, they'll only be without him for a minute and 33 seconds. But the score could be tied by the time Barry Huckabee's done here at the line. The Trojans down by two currently, and we've got a timeout on the floor. A minute 33 left in the game. Mount Vernon 55, Newcastle 53. We'll be back in just a moment. One minute and 33 seconds left in the game. Brian Gilpin is fouled out. Scored 14 points. Didn't get a rebound in the second half. Huckabee at the line. Short. He won't be able to tie it up. He gets one more. He has 24 points. Well, never nevertheless, Howard, the number nine team in the state of Indiana is against the ropes. Mount Vernon going to battle. All the way to the wire here. It is a one-point game, 55-54, Mount Vernon. A minute and a half to go in this one. What a ball game it is here at Newcastle High School. Carter is pressed by Catron. This is Roger Huffman. 120 to go. Kyle Fox on him. We better move it. Browning against Holmes. 110 to go, and the foul committed by Catron. That's number four on Catron. Well, you were prophetic, Howard. It boils down to free throw shooting, as we've seen this fourth quarter, really in the last about three minutes of this final stanza. It's been a parade back and forth to the free throw line, and I think it's going to boil down to who's able to connect more often than not. Okay, Mike Carter at the free throw line. He is 0 for 1 from the line tonight. Has not scored a five foot nine inch senior. No good. Huckabee with the rebound. The Trojans could go ahead. One minute to go in the game. Let's see how they handle it. Will they take the shot or will they run the clock down? Got a free shot. You might take it. We'll see what they do. Kyle Fox. Huckabee is positioned left side of the lane. Now he cuts across. Jason Holmes. Katrin, no good. Chad Klein with the rebound. 38 seconds to go. And a foul. Locking foul on Brandon Riggs. Boy, is this Newcastle team physical. They really apply a lot of pressure all over the court. I think by the end of the year, this is going to be an excellent team. Hell, they're a good team. They're a good team tonight. <laughs> They're playing number nine in the state, and they're hanging tough. They may come out of here with a victory. <laughs> After all, Howard, just a great display by Sam Alford's young and in inexperienced Trojans here tonight against Mount Vernon. Roger Huffman at the line. Pressure free throw. He's got it. Roger Huffman at the line is three, five, seven, eight of 11 from the free throw line tonight. 
Timeout called by Newcastle. 35 seconds to go in the game. Mount Vernon 56, Newcastle 54. What a game it's been, Jim. Well, we couldn't have asked for a better game than this has uh, evolved into, Howard. And it really looked early on as if it could be a blowout for the Mount Vernon Marauders. They raced to a 17-5 first quarter lead. Since that time, I really think this young and inexperienced club, the Sam Alfords, has responded in a very big way. As they battle back, they're in a position where they can win this ball game now. Sam can't ask any more from his club. Okay, there you see one of the Trojan cheerleaders. As Mount Vernon leads by two with just 35 seconds remaining. I'll tell you, before all said and done, Howard, Newcastle will be right in the thick of the North Central Conference race, and I think Muncie Central's a very good team. They've already beaten Pike this year, and Kokomo's got an outstanding uh, squad. Look out for Norm Held and Anderson. Dennis Casey cheering on Kokomo from the sidelines here. His hometown. All right, Roger Huffman at the line. He made the first one. Oh, he's cool under pressure. Watch number 11, Holmes. He's just a sophomore, but he's cool under ice. He's already buried one shot here in this critical fourth quarter, and he's running around. They he need wants three the ball. To tie. He wants it. Howard, look at the sophomore. Riggs. They need three to tie, 20 seconds to go. Riggs for three, no good. Huckabee grabs the rebound though. Riggs again for three, no good. The rebound, no good. Huckabee, good. One point game, seven seconds to go. Timeout, Newcastle. There you see it. Seven seconds remain. Mount Vernon 57, Newcastle 56. Well, in a nutshell, that last sequence for Newcastle is kind of a, a synopsis of the game. Just battling back, battling back, battling back. How could be offensive rebounds? They've really scratched and clawed uh, this whole contest ever since falling into the deep hole in the first quarter. Uh, they're down by a point. They would have preferred to have had the three-point basket there, but they're still alive. And next Saturday at 9 a.m., we'll be at Lawrence North. It'll be Brebuff at Lawrence North, a local telecast place. We'll stay in the city of Indianapolis. Big Allen Henderson, six, nine and a half, headed to Indiana University. What a great player. He's ranked in the top five in America. Uh, another Hoosier, Glenn Robinson, who we'll have later in the year. Uh, also uh, ranked number one in the nation by some scouting services. So we're going to see uh, we're going to see all the great players in the state of Indiana this year right here on TV 40. I would think that Newcastle would foul immediately. Well, they could go for the quick steal off the inbound, but after that, you're right. It's going to have to be a quick foul, and they better foul quickly. And finally, Chad Klein is fouled by Jason Holmes. Really not a bad situation, Howard, for Newcastle. Five full ticks on the clock. Even if Mount Vernon hits both shots, uh, the Trojans are going to be able to easily launch a three-point attempt. They've got uh, Holmes, a sophomore, who's a very good shooter. Huckabee can hit the three. Riggs can hit the three. Fox can hit the uh, three. I think all these kids from Newcastle can shoot the ball. They have a very good chance of sending this game into overtime. And if Klein misses one or both of these, they may win it on the last second shot. He's got it. It's a two-point lead. Chad Klein, two of three from the line. 25 points, 18 of them in the first half. Six foot eight inch senior will be attending Bradley. No good, they get to get the rebound. They're not gonna have time. And that's, that's gonna it. be it. That's it. The game is over. The final score, Mount Vernon 58, Newcastle 56. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Newcastle Chrysler Fieldhouse in Newcastle, Indiana, where the Mount Vernon Marauders have hold, held on for a two-point victory over Sam Alford and his Trojans, 58-56 to tonight. And, Jimmy, last year you were 20-4, and four, and two of your four losses were to these Newcastle Trojans. It must be nice to get out of this place with a victory. Anytime you can come into this gym and come out with a W, you've got to be pleased. The officials really let uh, the kids go at it. Do you think that plays into your hand? Uh, do you like the physical game? Well, I think we like the physical game, but uh, the way our team is right now with the injuries and the Gus Macker suspensions, we don't have the depth that we will have later on this year. So uh, I don't think it really helped us in this situation tonight. 
you did have three players uh, either injured or suspended, and Browning came uh, on in the second half, did a great job. These two guys on my left and right, though, Brian Gilpin and uh, Chad Klein did a tremendous job. Well, they're good players. Uh, Chad, you know, is, is, is going to Division One, and Brian is going to Division One. They're, they're big-time players, and I think they proved that tonight. Let's talk to Chad here for a minute, a senior. He'll be going to Bradley University on a full scholarship. And I think if any of the scouting uh, staff from Bradley was watching tonight, they've got to be really laughing. I think so. I played really well. Mr. Charles always said I, I've uh, not played to my full potential. And tonight I think I probably played some really well ball at times, but I did fall asleep on defense a lot. I still need to work on that. But uh, I tried to help the team as much as I could and help Bjelpen and everybody else as much. And then the points just came. Of course, the laughter I'm speaking of would not be at your play, but laughing at the Ball States or the Indiana States or the Butlers or whoever that the, you, they probably figure should have uh, recruited you. Uh, were you pursued by some of the uh, state colleges? A uh, few. Uh, they off and on a little bit, but then they finally dropped off, and Bradley just stayed with it the whole time. So I liked the college, so I decided to go there. Congratulations, 25 points, 9 rebounds on the night. And Brian Gilpin, we've got to get you in here. We've got a few more seconds. Indiana University awaits down the road. You've got to be uh, extremely proud uh, that Coach Bob Knight wants you in the fold down at Bloomington. Yeah, I'm uh, really proud of that and everything. I'm you know, really glad that Coach Knight you know, talked to me and really wanted me to come there. And, you know, I just don't really think about that. Just think about playing at Mount Vernon and trying to hopefully get to the Hoosier Dome this year. 14 points, 13 rebounds on the night. Last year you averaged six points, but here in your first two games this year, 15 and 14, are you pleased with your progress? Yeah, I'm, I think I can score a lot more than that. I, I took some bad shots as off balance and stuff at times, but, you know, I think that's going to come throughout the season, you know, because, you know, me and Chad, we play against each other all the time in practice, and, you know, we get used to each other, and, you know, now it's a little bit different ball game. Well, you both played very well tonight. I'm impressed with both of you. Coach Jimmy Howell, a big victory here at Newcastle. We'll be back right after this with more from Howard. Back at Newcastle High School, Mount Vernon defeats Newcastle 58-56. We will look at the individual scoring totals. We'll look at the final statistics now. There they are, the final score, 58-56. 20 of 39 from the floor for the Marauders. 22 of 61 for the Trojans. Three-point shots, one of two for the Marauders. Two of nine for the Trojans. Free throws, 15 of 24 for the Marauders. Six of eight for the Trojans. Marauders with 14 turnovers. Trojans, eight turnovers. Rebounds, 33 for the Marauders, 22 for the Trojans. High point men for Mount Vernon. Klein had 25, Gilpin 14 for Newcastle, Huckabee 27, and Riggs 12. Don't forget, next Saturday morning, it'll be Brebuff playing at Lawrence North. There's your final. Mount Vernon, 58, Newcastle 56. For Jim Casper, I'm Howard Kelman. Goodbye, everybody.